Hi and welcome. In today's lecture, we'll discuss about the distinguishing physical properties of a mineral that, in most cases, can be used to determine the identity of a mineral. Let's begin with the first physical property, that is crystal habit. The term used to describe general shape of a crystal is habit. In nature, perfect crystals are rare. The faces that develop on the crystal depend on the space available for the crystals to grow. As you can see in the figure below, there are several crystal habits, general forms and combinations. For example, acicular refers to a crystal habit composed of slender needle-like crystals. Botryoidal mineral has a globular external form or ball-like clusters resembling a bunch of grapes. Bladed is blade-like, slender and flattened. Dendritic is tree-like, branching in one or more direction from the central point. The second property is cleavage. Crystals often contain planes of atoms along which bonding between atoms is weaker than along other planes. In such a case, if the mineral is struck with a hard object, it will tend to break along these planes. This property of mineral, breaking along specific smooth flat planes, is termed cleavage. Cleavage can also be described in terms of its quality. That is, if it cleaves along perfect planes, it is said to be perfect. And if it cleaves along poorly defined planes, it is said to be poor. In this figure, you can see different types of cleavage. Cleavage in one direction, cleavage in two directions at right angles, cleavage in two directions not at right angles, cleavage in three directions at right angles, and so on. Parting is also a plane of structural weakness in the crystal but it is along planes that are weakened by some external applied force. It therefore may not be apparent in all specimens of the same mineral, but may appear if the mineral has been subjected to the right stress conditions. If the mineral contains no planes of weakness, it will break along random directions, called fracture. Several different kinds of fracture patterns are observed. First is conchoidal fracture, which is observed in the mineral quartz. It breaks along smooth curved surfaces, fibrous and splintery, as observed in the mineral kyanite. It is similar to the way wood breaks. Hackley, jagged fractures with sharp edges, in native copper. Uneven or irregular fracture, that is rough irregular surface, observed in pyrite or magnetite. Here you can clearly see the difference between fracture surface and cleavage planes. You should also note that there is a right angle corner between the two cleavage planes. Hardness is the ability to resist being scratched. It is one of the most useful properties for identifying minerals. Hardness is a relative scale. Thus, to determine a mineral's hardness, one need materials with a hardness greater than the mineral and also need to know minerals of lesser hardness. Friedrich Moos, a German mineralogist, produced a hardness scale in 1812 using a set of 10 standard minerals. Mohs hardness scale arranges the minerals in order of increasing hardness from 1 to 10. These minerals are listed here along with the hardness of some common objects. Resistance that a mineral offers to breaking, crushing, bending, cutting, drawing or tearing is its tenacity. Tenacity can be described by the following terms. Brittle, breaks or powders easily. Malleable, can be hammered into thin sheets. Sectile, can be cut into thin shavings with a knife. Ductile, bends 
easily and does not return to its original shape can be drawn into wires flexible bends somewhat and does not return to its original shape elastic bends but spring back and resumes its original position after bending density is defined as the mass per unit volume specific gravity is relative density it is a unitless number that expresses the ratio between the weight of a substance and the weight of an equal volume of water at 4 degrees celsius for most of us color is one of the key ways of identifying objects while some minerals have particularly distinctive colors that make good diagnostic properties many do not and for many color is simply unreliable they can take on a variety of colors such type of minerals are said to be allochromatic for example olivin and epidote are almost always green in color while quartz can be clear white black pink blue or purple streak is the color produced by a fine powder of the mineral when scratched on a streak plate often it is different than the color of the mineral in non powdered form streak is usually more useful for identification than the color of the whole mineral sample rubbing the mineral on a streak plate will produce a streak a streak plate can be made from unglazed back side of a white porcelain tile also some minerals won't streak because they are harder than the streak plate Luster is the general appearance of a mineral surface in reflected light. There are two general types of luster: metallic luster and non-metallic luster. Metallic luster looks shiny like a metal. It strictly belongs to opaque minerals where light is completely reflected from the surface. Most of the ore minerals having high content of metals shows metallic luster. All other types of luster are collectively known as non-metallic luster. It may be brilliant or faint where reflection is poor which is due to the scattering of light from the mineral surface. So now you know that non-metallic lusters are referred as glassy or vitreous, dull, clay-like, waxy, pearly, silky, resinous and many others minerals that light up when exposed to ultraviolet light x-rays or cathode rays are called fluorescent if the emission of light continues after the light is cut off they are said to be phosphorescent magnetic minerals result from properties that are specific to a number of elements elements like titanium chromium vanadium manganese iron cobalt nickel and copper can sometimes result in magnetism if any minerals contain these elements and show magnetic property they are called paramagnetic minerals paramagnetic minerals only show magnetic properties when subjected to an external magnetic field when the magnetic field is removed the minerals have no magnetism minerals that do not have these elements and thus have no magnetism are called diamagnetic ferromagnetic minerals have permanent magnetism if the temperature is below the curie temperature that was all for today i hope you enjoyed learning about the physical properties of minerals see you again until then stay healthy live happily and keep learning